JJ Jinx. Truck stop. Time for the September Smoky Mountain Life Works General's Box. I picked the Benchmade Bug Out as my favorite knife from last month's box, but I'm not going to use it to open this one. I'm going to bring back an oldie. The Cold Steel Kudu Light, which we got, uh, that was a couple months ago, I think. Maybe three months ago. I don't remember. Why am I bringing back the Cold Steel Kudu out of nowhere? My knife broke. <laughs> I was, um, you know, getting ready to make a video about the uh, Okapi Kudu, uh, you know, this type of knife. And um, I went to open this one, and this little piece from the back spring just kind of went pink. And it made a pinging sound as it flew off. And then the blade just straight up swung completely out. Hmm. Cold steel can make shitty knives, too. <laughs> well, I guess the nice thing is now you know what it looks like to open the cold steel kudu smoothly. And when you hold it kind of at its apex there, you can see how far this piece of metal has to spring, and uh, it just couldn't handle it and broke right at the fulcrum. This is not the first time this has happened. I've seen photos of this happening online, and that's what you get for eight bucks. But um, it's okay because I have another one. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. I wanted to use it for this unboxing just to give it a proper goodbye. Maybe I'll send the blade out to Tristan Barnett. Maybe he can make something cool out of it. Uh, I don't know. This is going to be difficult because there's nothing holding the blade up. Cold Steel Kudu Light, you are retired! There's your sneak preview. Now you gotta do it the hard way. Ah, I recognized this brand just by the color. <laughs> it had that shrayed green to it. So we got an orange knife with a black blade and a knife condom. What is this thing? It's the folding knife. Hmm. <laughs> this knife just doesn't seem to have a name. 7CR17 MOV G10 scales, liner lock, and a clip. What are you? Uh. Hey, that actually worked. <laughs> I was kind of worried for a moment. Ah. Uh. I feel like it's been forever. This knife is cheap as hell, I can already tell. <laughs> well, the G10 scales are pretty thick. It's got full liners on both sides. It's riding on Teflon with a high ride pocket clip. Oh, this is one of those knives? It doesn't have a thumb stud or a flipper tab. You just kind of have to oh, open it that way. It's got a detent though, I'll tell you that. Well, we got some speed holes going down the side here. Uh, the lockup is good. Is it flippable? Eh, eh, eh. Nope, need that tab, need that thumb stud. Okay, I already don't like this knife. <laughs> this knife, I think, probably cost $12. Hand feels okay. But that's just the first impression. I got a feeling this jagged, toothy looking liner lock might be giving me a problem. I do like the juxtaposition between the orange and the green. That's a cool look. They should have put some green in this knife. Oh well. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, there's a knife in this box somewhere without a box. It's probably this one. 
Oh, it's the Benchmark Paratrooper. I've looked at this knife before. I mean, online. I didn't get it, though. It's one of those uh, knives that kind of swing out at a hinge in one direction and then swing out in the other direction. I thought it was interesting because um, it's more of a square shape and also the blade is um, a confusing geometry. It's like super thick and then has an interesting swedge thing. Yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool, but I didn't get one because I was like, I got a couple of these paratrooper style knives. I don't need another one. But now I do have it, and that's that's good. That makes me happy. Yeah, this this thing is so thick up here. It it reminds me of like the the CIA sticker thing that I got. <laughs> it feels nice because of how it's like rounded around the handle. Like this part's a little rounded, this part's a little rounded, and then all together it feels oh, almost like an up and L. <laughs> and here I guess that's supposed to be a glass breaker. I don't think that would work too well, but it's there. That's yeah, like a pyramid, very artistic. Uh, and you got a pocket clip with the Benchmark logo. It almost looks like it, almost, it looks like a pen <laughs> at first glance. Ooh. That pocket clip is very loose. Hmm. Like, it doesn't take much effort at all to lift it. it it's pretty much made for the front pocket, I think, in my opinion. Anyway, that's the Benchmark Para Trooper. Neat mechanism. There's Bigfoot. There's a Storm Golem. <laughs> candy. Candy. Little tiny knife. <laughs> oh, let's get all this candy out of the way. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I remember getting a little itty bitty knife like this from Rough Rider, maybe two months or three months in. Hell, it might have been the first month I've done this. I think this might be the exact same one too. I recognize the color. Yep, I believe this is the same thing. Little golden folding knife. Kind of like a sod buster, a micro sod buster. The sod buster nano. <laughs> I don't think you can cut anything with it. I would lose this very quickly if I tried to carry it and use it at work. <laughs> Not the first time we've seen repeats in the Smoky Mountain Knife Works monthly subscription boxes. But if you're going to have a repeat, that's the one to do, right? Pretty unique. Here's a thing. The Explorer Push Dagger Survival Card. Check that out. Oh, man. I did a whole video about my survival card collection. This would have been great for that. So it's a survival card with a push dagger in it. <laughs> All right, let's see what the paratrooper knife has for us. Oh, that worked surprisingly well. So this is made by, who makes this? Oh, it's China. Okay, is that how it goes in? Oh, wait. Hold on. Ah, never mind. I thought, like, the magnets held it in, but no. It's just so you can slap this onto your refrigerator so you can be ready to use it at a moment's notice. The stainless steel card is about the size of a business card. Wait. Um, about. <laughs> I do like the phallic look to this thing. That alone is worth it. The push... Dagger has an oval hole in it and a cutout in the handle for weight reduction. I'm not huge into push daggers. I'm not into them at all, in fact. But I've never seen a push dagger come out of a survival card. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. I really like this. I'm definitely going to stick it to something to see what that's like, but... What else do we have? Oh, we got like a protractor thingy with a couple of notches. And you got a ruler, uh, hex wrench things. Yeah, it's your usual kind of semi-useless things that you commonly see in these survival cards. But this, you 
don't commonly see. Wow! A pocket sharpener with 600 grit and ceramic rods. This item is branded Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Let's see what this is. Oh, it's one of these things that I would never use. <laughs> I've never had good luck getting a nice edge on these, even the ones that have like the different angles and the different materials. Uh, just get the rods and do it that way, or a whetstone, or both actually, and learn. It takes a lot of practice, but you'll get there eventually. I'm still learning myself. Also, you're kind of limited to how thick your blade can be based on these openings. So if I wanted to sharpen this knife that you gave me, SMKW, I can't even get it in there. See? <laughs> I'm stuck. Oh, here we have a package deal from Old Timer. Um, I recognize this tool that's like an equestrian thing, right? You use it to clean out a horse's hoof and um, some playing cards. The face cards are knife cards. That's pretty neat. It says blazer slash card combo. So I guess this is the old timer blazer. Huh. Let's give the trade knife a chance. Oh, I'm going to hate carrying this one. Arr. Well, if cutting plastic were a benchmark for knives, the trade would do well. Oh, I get to say it again, Sam. Well, you got the classic uh, sock cut look to the old timer scales. Uh, clip point blade on a slip joint knife. A little bit rough, but I've had worse. Oh, it's not one of those equestrian tools. It's like a cutter thing. What? What is this? <laughs> it's kind of. I like it. It's goofy. Can I use it to do this? Not really. I don't know what to do with the blazer. This is really strange. <laughs> I thought it was the hoof cleaner. Maybe it is, and I'm just not recognizing it. Huh. Well, one thing I don't like is the way it leaves that gap when you close it. Um, eh, it's just a little goofy looking. It's all right. Let's use it to cut open the, its cards. Wait. Hey. That cut really well, actually. Good job, Old Timer. Old Timer's owned by Shrate, right? Well, I kind of want to keep this closed. Um, let's have a look on the back of the package of what these knives are. Do they tell you the knife? They do. The Ace of Knives is a pro hunter. The King of Knives is a wrangler. The Queen of Knives is a copperhead little finger. The Jack of Knives is a dog leg jack. I don't think the Ten of Knives were a face card and, you know, real cards, but whatever. The Ten of Knives is a... I can't read that. I think it says Bearhead Trapper. Bearhead? Well, I'm not going to correct myself. That's a good name for it. The Bearhead Trapper. <laughs> I've recently taken a big liking to Cold Steel. You know, despite the kudu incident, I can forgive them for that. So, here's one from Cold Steel, the Luzon. You know what's funny, is I was actually looking at this knife, and I almost bought it last week while I was on the road. I chose not to. A strange voice in my head said, JJ Jinx, don't buy the Luzon. I think that voice was from the Knife Gods. Telling me that I was about to get one anyway. <laughs> anyway, I got a good feeling about Cold Steel. I think that they are going to go in great directions. It's just a feeling. And uh, the last time I had a feeling about Cold Steel, a good thing happened. See? It's Providence. So the Luzon is a liner locked knife with a very, very shiny blade. Um, I don't remember the name of Cold Steel's plastic. They don't call it plastic. They call it something else, but it's plastic. Uh, check out that pocket clip. It's an all-polymer pocket clip. 
uh, bolted into the side of the scale and it's thick as hell. I don't know how that is going to work, but I'm really interested to find out. And you got a huge, you got a very long backspacer too, contoured to these uh, grooves in the back. So that's neat. I love how shiny the blade is. That is handsome as hell. It's a long, slender clip point with one of those grooves punched into it. That feels like bearings. It looks like bearings. I think this knife is riding on bearings. What is this switch? I don't remember that being on it. That's got to be a safety, right? It's not going. <laughs> hmm. Well, you got thumb studs too, but they're so close to the scales and close to the pivot that it's got that CRKT uh, CEO problem. But, uh, oh, now the switch goes. Oh, I see. It locks the liner lock. So it sort of turns it into a pseudo fixed blade. <laughs> I've seen that kind of thing before. Not from cold steel though, but then again, I don't own too many cold steel knives. And they did one of the most important things to me. They put the name of the knife on the blade because I forget all the time what these are called. <laughs> I've got a feeling I'm gonna really, really like carrying the Luzon. Uh, I found this box. It's rather square. Uh, it says MKM, climb the edge. And there's a circle on it with orange in it. I have no idea what this is. I'm just gonna open it and we'll all be surprised. Uh, how do I open it? Uh. There we go. Oh, it's a knife. <laughs> I'm not familiar with MKM, but it comes with a tool. I appreciate that. Not many knives do that. I know um, Microtech does it. Uh, what? Uh, what's that company? Western Active does it. Uh, there are people who do it. And I guess uh, MKM does it. We got some pretty comfy foam padding everything. Hmm. Well, based on the company logo, I got a feeling this is going to be like a climbing-oriented knife. Whoa. That's like one of those things where you have to stare at it for an hour before you see the sailboat. That is so shimmery and cool. Oh, we have a very large slot so you can clip this to things or carabine it to things. But it itself is not a carabiner. There's a small slip of plastic protecting the scale from the wire clip, which, that's a neat touch, but it has me a little concerned. Are these scales fragile? Are they going to scratch up easily? Not sure what that's about. I do like the wire clip. It's like that kind that Spyderco's been using. I've had good experiences with it so far. It's on the Dragonfly that I have. Um, so I am familiar with it. It kind of looks like mica, you know? Look at that multi-layering effect, too. You can really see the different layers that they put together to cut this thing out. It's kind of a shame that they didn't do any jigging or anything to it to really make that effect pop. Kind of like the decorative scale piece on the CRKT Fossil. Uh, this says M390. That's a pretty good blade steel, or it's a pretty expensive one, as far as I know. So this might be one of the more expensive knives, even though it is small. Uh, it's a liner lock with recessed liners. That's one of my favorite features, too. Feels like it should be sharp, and it looks like it's on bearings as well. Huh. Well, I can open it one-handed. The liner is hard to access because there's no uh, real protrusion to g gain purchase of it. That'll annoy me later. Let's learn more about MKM. Maniago knife makers, made in Maniago, Italy. Oh, excuse me. Maniago knife makers. Oh. 
Oh, here's all the other brands they're associated with. Fox Knives, heard of them. Lion Steel, heard of them. Mercury, I haven't heard of them actually. Hey, it's a Maniaggio. Well, now I love this knife. Wow. And we have a boxed knife that says Revo on it. Revo? Revo knives. Revoc Nivis. Revoc Nivis. That's like the, uh, the Roman pronunciation. Uh, okay, and inside we got a sticker, I think. Yeah, it's like a decal deal. That's cool. I don't know anything about this brand, so I'll add that sticker to my collection of stickers. Uh, the next level. We have. I like this typeface. It kind of reminds me of the uh, the numbers counting down and the Predator's bomb thing on his wrist. <laughs> I don't know why. There's the Berserk. That's a neat look. Look at that compound grind on the blade there. That's neat. They make a canine karambit, a recoil, a vipera. Oh, a whole bunch of information that I am way too tired to read. Holy crap, they give you an entire script. I'll hold on to it in case I want to read it later. And here's the knife, which has a very phallic cutout. <laughs> if I would just like left this open on my dining room table and my roommates walked in and saw it, I wonder how they would react. Magnetically shut too. Interesting. Well, the pocket clip is uh, a little different because it gets narrow down towards the end. It's a deep ride. The, the metal of the pocket clip is recessed. The screws, sadly, are not. What is going on with these backspacers? I'm not really sure what to make of this knife. Well, I can see it's got bearings in the pivot, that's for sure. These thumb things are interesting. They kind of remind me of... Um, flippers and a pinball machine know what I mean and you got, got this neat little cutout here leading up to the thumb flipper it's a cool look and you can swap the pocket clip to the other side if you want to hmm. misfiring here well needs to be broken in a little bit I guess or I just have to get used to it um, I'm overall kind of, it, it, it's rather ordinary, you know? Full steel liners on both sides, not recessed. Scales that feel like they could be G10 or perhaps FRN. They're basically the same thing to me. Satin stone wash finish. Don't know what kind of steel. I don't know anything about this knife. This is kind of, it's, it's, it's not ugly, but yeah, I don't know. It's ordinary. <laughs> For, ooh, it's open assisted? I didn't even know that. Why Why would you put pivots on an open assisted? Anyway, strange design choices. For the, uh, the Revo, the Revoc Nives. Fortunately, I have some confidential information for my eyes only. Here's the thing, though. I always like to try to guess which one of these is the, you know, higher level, uh, the higher tier knives. I have no idea <laughs> with this one. I'm pretty sure the Shrade will be in the lowest tier, along with the Itty Bitty Rough Rider, probably the Old Timer, um, and probably this one too. I might be wrong about that, but pff, no idea. This is probably going to be in the General's level. You know what? Let's just find out. In the GI box, we've got the Schrade Model 1110, the orange liner lock. Notable features, ambidextrous thumb studs? Eh? It says it right here. It's a manual folder with ambidextrous thumb studs. Textured orange polymer handles. This says no thumb studs. What the fuck? <laughs> well, I was wrong on the price point. It's $8. <laughs> Where are my thumb studs straight? Okay, and they're calling this one the Old Timer Trapper with Cards Combo. Uh, I guess the handle is shaped like a trapper. I ain't never seen a trapper with one of these before, though. 
What's that about? High carbon stainless steel, black polymer handles, blah blah blah. Includes a 52 card deck. $9.99 for this and the cards. Okay, that's a pretty good price. And for $2.99 you get the sharpener that I'll never use. Uh, $600 for the coarse one. Uh, doesn't give any kind of number for the fine rods. It just says that uh, they're ceramic. $2.99. It weighs 0 0.64 ounces. And the Rough Riders, smallest of the small brass folder. $3.99. Oh, it's made out of brass? Huh. I, I just figured it was plastic. <laughs> Comes with a lanyard bale, a thumb hole. You could look at your thumb in that. <laughs> I'd love to see someone open this one-handed. No weight on it, though. Hmm. I need that stat. The Explorer Push Dagger card thing. $7.99. Stainless steel construction. It can open a can, lift a cap. It can saw. It can screw drivers. I mean, drive screws. And it's got a hex wrench and a ruler. Eight bucks. The Benchmark Paratrooper Folder, 3.5 inches of stainless steel with a matte finish, $11.99 from Benchmark. That was all in the GI box. The Officer's Box gets two knives this month. The Revo, this is called the Warden, G10 in black. 9 CR18 MOV, drop point blade, stone wash finish, spring assisted ambidextrous thumb studs for real this time. <laughs> Weighs 3.2 ounces, $49. Oof, that feels overpriced. I got a feeling that at the end of the month, I'm going to report to you that this does not feel like a $49 knife. Or I could be wrong, but that's what it costs. And. Also in the Officer's Club box, the Cold Steel Luzon. This is the medium-sized model. 8CR13 MOV steel. It's called a leaf spring lock folder. Glass-filled nylon handles. Yes, that's your FRM sort of stuff. Three and a half ounces, nine inches overall. It's big. $42.99. Yeah, some of Cold Steel's stuff ain't so cheap, but it's good, uh, except for Kudu's. Well, I was right. This is what comes in the General's box. It's the only knife to come in the General's box. It is the MKM Isonzo SMKW Exclusive Fat Carbon Lava Flow Stone Wash Clip Point. Okay, that sounds like a lot of things. So these are Lava Flow Fat Carbon handles. Okay, <laughs> that's what they're called. Uh, the red aluminum spacer is anodized. So yeah, this is something you could go on an adventure into a volcano with. Fuck me! It's $132? Oh, mate. That ain't $132. Come on. I don't care how cool the scales look. I mean, I guess that's where all the money is. It's got to be in the scales, right? Like, maybe the manufacturing process is really complicated and it takes a lot of time. Uh, it's Italian? <laughs> M390. I mean, that's a steel that a lot of people praise, but... A hundred and thirty dollars? Wow. I'm in awe. It, you know what? It could be that I have no idea what I'm talking about, and this is one of the greatest knives ever. That's been known to happen. I'm still learning. <laughs> but, jeez. I mean, it had to have been over a hundred just because it's in the general's box. But it still surprised the hell out of me. Well, now I am the most interested in carrying this knife over the next month. <laughs> but it's going to have a lot of competition for pocket time. Because this month's box was just loaded with stuff. 
What a great thing to come home from a vacation to. Thank you, Smoky Mountain. There's the thumbnail.